Hello YouTube and welcome to this video where we're going to be making some pretty cool charcuterie boards where we're going to be putting some seashells and some gravel in them. Although in reality you can put almost just whatever you want in there. So I messed up and I forgot to record the part leading up to this or I might have deleted the footage. Either way, really not sure. Uh, but let me kind of bring you up to speed. So these are some walnut slabs that I had. The uh, handles I traced and cut out using a template from Crafted Elements. The big holes in the middle, those are just some random patterns I cut using a jigsaw. So the base that they're sitting in is a, an epoxy resin mold that I use for coffee tables. And what I've done is I've taken a thin layer of silicone and put it along the bottom and the edges of the uh, charcuterie board, basically to hold the resin into place kind of glued them into place for all intents and purposes. So once you get your base layer of epoxy resin down, uh, you want to use tabletop. You really don't need much. You just need quarter inch at the very, very most just to kind of, kind of give you your base layer with some color. Once that dries, you can start putting your landscape in, or in this case, your seascape. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Put your seashells, um, or really whatever you want in there. So here I got some seashells, some sand dollars, some crushed coral. Over here I got some pebbles, some gravel I found from a creek bed I thought would look kind of cool. On this one I'm kind of just putting it all in there, kind of spreading it out. And then this one, a little different. I'm kind of piling it all up in the front and then kind of sloping it down to the bottom a little bit. But in reality, it really doesn't matter how you put it in there. Um, it's really up to you on what you think looks good. Once you get everything into place, you want to move on to putting, uh, basically filling it in with your deep pour resin. You do not want to use tabletop for this. You'll end up getting bubbles and having all kinds of other issues. Make sure you mix it up really, really well. I found a lot of people that have problems with this. Uh, it's because they don't mix it up properly, but they don't mix it up well enough. Again, this part's pretty self-explanatory. You're filling it in. Um, then you can see a couple of those, uh, like my sand dollar moved, some of your seashells will, so you can take anything really, but I just use some popsicle sticks, kind of move things back in place. And then uh, it's pretty normal, your seashells, things like that, they always have air bubbles underneath them, so I go ahead and just kind of flip them over, kind of burp those bubbles out, so to speak. That'll limit uh, some of the issues you run into later on with that. So I had to make up a little more resin for this last one, but uh, kind of self-explanatory again. Just go ahead and fill in this one in, and uh, same thing like the ones before. Once you get your resin in, I like taking a blowtorch, taking care of all the bubbles. You can use a heat gun, but uh, I prefer a blowtorch. I think it works a little better. Plus, it's cool playing with fire. All right, a few days later, resin's dried. Here you can kind of see what I was talking about where I silicone things in place. You can see a little bit of silicone on the front of these boards to stop the resin from leaking out. And uh, you'll see here in a sec where I did on the bottom as well. And again, that's just to kind of hold the resin in place while it's drying. These things pop off pretty easily as long as you put a little bit of mold release down. Sometimes you need a screwdriver, kind of like I'm doing here, just to kind of pry them off. But uh, generally speaking, it's, it, it's not that uh, difficult to get them out. All right, next step, once you get everything pried off, is going to go ahead and start planing things. This silicone comes off pretty easy with the planer, or at least with mine it does. And basically just going to go ahead and keep feeding these. Um, going to take several passes, just take a little bit off at a time. But on the front and back, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking off just enough so that the wood and the resin are completely flush with each other. And you can see on this one here, once I get it through this last pass, you kind of see what I'm talking about, where everything starts getting flush. The resin is going to be, or kind of have an, an opaque look, kind of like that. And uh, we'll get that back to normal with some sanding. 
So after planing, I like feeding them through this wide belt sander. This does a great job of just making the boards perfect, as I would describe it. Um, it gets rid of any little wobble. It takes out all the little bumps, the imperfections, everything, and makes it perfectly flat. Uh, this definitely takes some time. As you can see, it doesn't move real fast, and depending on the board or if it wasn't completely flat to begin with, it might sit here for several minutes kind of feeding them through, but uh, it's totally worth the investment in time, and uh, like I said, it, it gets the boards just perfect. And here, my belt came off, and this is me trying to fix it so I can continue on with the sanding. And after running everything through the belt sander, we move on to another belt sander. Where here I'm kind of just sanding around the handle, getting all that smooth. It's not a real easy spot to get with the palm sander. And you can see here I'm kind of hitting it at an angle. What this does is this kind of gives the handle a little bit of a beveled edge. Where after that I can take the palm sander and really kind of round it out and just make it a nice handle. You want to spend a lot of time getting the handles just right. Yes, people see the board first, but the very first thing they touch when they pick it up is the handle. So the handle has to feel right. It's gotta fit in the hand right. It's gotta be perfectly smooth. Um, so I try to, try to spend some extra time doing that. And after the belt sander, what do we do? We move on to more sanding. Lots and lots of sanding for all this. So for this, I usually start at 100 grit. I give it an initial sanding. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, spray it down with some water, kind of give it the water pop to pop the grain. And then I'll come back and I'll move up to uh, 180 grain, 220, 320, and 400. This is usually where I stop with just the wood. As far as the, uh, the clear resin, um, I'll move all the way up to 1200 and then uh, move on to a... Uh, a polishing compound which uh, I'll show you here in just a sec all right so here I am moving on to the polishing compound this is some stuff from Festool it's water-based so it's not toxic I use their polishing pads there are three different steps to it the first one is 5,000 grit then I think it goes from 8,000 to 11,000 and they have unique pads basically for uh, for each grit once that's all done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some mineral oil on it. i got some other boards here because yeah. uh, I always have about 800 projects going on all at once. Here's my kid coming in who wants to help splash some oil around to make a mess. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I put a little bit of mineral oil on these things and that dries, then I always go ahead and finish them off with some Odie's oil. If you haven't used that stuff before, it's super, super awesome. Go ahead and uh, check it out. So as always, thanks for watching. Here are some pictures of the final product. Please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, any of that good stuff. Uh, really helps the channel out and then you don't miss out on more content.